So let's apply the method of section to find the internal forces for three of these members. And the three members that we're going to focus on will be members BC, members CH, and members HG. So we're going to analyze the internal forces for those three members. Now, the method of section is a very fast and powerful way to find internal forces for specific members of a truss system. And instead of us analyzing joint by joint as we did in the previous video, this is a way more efficient method to find the internal forces for specific members. Now, the first step is to find the reaction forces and we have done this before, so I'm just going to go through it relatively quickly. So we're going to do the sum of the moment about point A. And this is where our point A is highlighted in purple. And that sum should be equal to zero if it is that our system is in equilibrium, which it is. So we're going to now apply our clockwise moment equals counterclockwise moment about that point and let's examine our forces so the first force we have that eight newtons there and its distance from that pivot point a is six meters so we do eight multiplied by six we also have three newtons that's trying to rotate clockwise and its distance now is 12 meters so we do three multiplied by 12 and just to re-emphasize that the distance has to be perpendicular distance so that's our distance there and then that's our last force that we have that's trying to rotate clockwise. So we turn our attention now to the reaction at E. And for the reaction at E, its distance from A or RA is 24 meters. So here we have this equation that we need to solve now. So we have RE now equals to 8 times 6, 48, plus 3 times 12, 36. So RE is our 84 divided by 24 and that gives us 3.5 newtons so that's the reaction at E and then now to find the next reaction which is our reaction at A we're going to apply our next equilibrium equation so we're going to say that the sum of our vertical forces should be equal to zero so therefore all forces going up should be equal to the sum of all the forces going down. And what we have going up will be Ra plus Re. And we also have now going down 8 newtons plus 3 newtons. So because we have already found Ra as 3.5, we just need to subtract that from the 8 plus 3, so 11 minus 3.5. So we get that as 7.5 Newton. So that gives us now our value for the, the values for the reactions. So let's get now to finding those internal forces for BC, CH and HG using the method of section. And the first step that we have to take is to draw an imaginary cut through those three members. So that would just simply look like that, just an imaginary line. And what we're going to do now is either isolate the system to the left of that line or to the right of that line. And it doesn't matter which part of the system we use, we are going to get the same answer. So I'm going to choose to isolate to the left and then we're going to analyze that. So here we have the system to the left and we're going to find those internal forces now. And the first thing we need to acknowledge is we have our length there so we have six meters going horizontally across for each member and then we have that vertical height there that height is eight meters and it would also be useful if we know the length of a b just for a future calculation that i'm anticipating so for a b because what we have here is a right angle triangle, we can just apply Pythagoras' theorem because we already have those two short sides and that would just simply be the square root of eight squared plus six squared and that should give us 64 plus 36 or so square root 100, so that gives us 10 meters. So we know the length, so that's the length of a B member. So let's try now to find the internal forces for each of those members that we, we decide to, to analyze. So we're going to start with member CH. 
and for CH you will notice that it is the only inclined member that we have so that's CH now all the other members they are horizontal members so it means they do not have any vertical component and that's good news for us in finding CH because it's the only member that will have any form of vertical component so it means that it will be the only unknown in this equation that we do so for member CH we're going to take the sum of the vertical forces for that one equals zero and it's literally the same as we have done before but this time we, we just have a slight different um, approach so let's go through that now so we know then that for this method all the forces going up should sum to give the same as the forces going downwards and what we have going up we have that 7.5 newtons that's going up now we have that 8 newton that's going downward so for this instance i'm just going to put minus 8 newtons going downwards and and that would be us already organizing this equation and then now when we get to member ch we're going to have to use its vertical force component so then that would simply be ch sin angle and if you remember the the sin cos and tan we know that sin is opposite over hypotenuse and in this case our opposite member for for that angle would be that eight meters and the hypotenuse would be the same as a b so that would be 10 so we can simply write an equation or a fraction to represent sin angle and what that would look like that would simply be 7.5 minus 8 plus we did say we're going to use 8 over 10 so 8 over 10 which is the opposite over hypotenuse and all that's doing is it's replacing that sin angle because it's opposite over hypotenuse and then we have times that by ch equal 0 so now at this stage we just need to solve this equation to get what ch equals to and for CH, that's going to equal 2. So when we do 7.5 minus 8, that leaves us with 0 0.5. So this equation will rearrange to look like this. So 0 0.5 multiplied by 10. So that's just doing inverse operations there and divided by 8. So we get this here as 0 0.625 newtons and it's positive so therefore that member will be in tension so that's ch done so we're now going to move on i'll just try find bc next so for member bc we're going to apply the moment equation so we're going to take the sum of that moment about a specific point and in this instance you can choose where you want to rotate the system about whatever point that's convenient and if we analyze carefully we can see that if we rotate this system about this point here point h that will mean that the the force members for ch and hg will not have any effect on this rotation or on this moment because they are passing directly through this point here so therefore its perpendicular distance first off will be zero so the sum of that moment in total will also be zero so that's quite an efficient way to solve this member bc so let's get into that let's find what member bc equals to so again the first thing we're going to set out is our equilibrium equation for the sum of the moment so the sum of the moment and we're doing it this time about point h is equal to zero so let's get into that now so we're going to say all the members that's rotating all the forces that's trying to rotate in a clockwise direction let's take them to be positive and anything going counterclockwise let's take them to be negative so the first force, let's look at this 7.5 newtons. So 7.5 newtons, that's purely vertical force. Its distance from that pivot point, H, is 6 meters. So we will have, for the first rotation, 7.5 multiplied by 6. So 
That's the first one there. The next one, we also have our, our fourth member that we are trying to find here, which is BC. And for BC, it's perpendicular distance from that point. You will see BC going across and you can see that eight Newtons coming in connection with BC there. So we'll have BC multiplied by eight. So that's just two um, forces so far. Now you're probably wondering, so what do we do about that force, that eight Newtons? Now let's look at that real quick. So that eight Newtons, it's going right through that very same pivot point. So it does not have a perpendicular distance. So that would simply turn out to be eight times zero. So we don't need to include that any at all in our calculation. So what that means is this is all we'll have to find BC. So all of that should be equal to zero. And now let's do the calculation. So BC would be equal to, so 7.5 times six. So we have that as 45 and 45 plus BC times eight equals zero. So therefore, when we solve this equation, we get BC as negative 45, and that will be divided by eight. Negative 45 divided by eight. So we get BC as negative 5.625 Newtons. And because that's negative, then that's a force member in compression. Now that leaves us with only one unknown and that unknown is our HG member. Now for HG, I'm just going to use this one with a, another technique that's quite efficient. And to show you that, I'm going to have to erase these, that member and then I'll use a dotted line to, to illustrate. So for member HG, just imagine that that member went all the way up to where point C is and we could actually pivot about that point. The reason for that specific point is because members BC and CH will be passing through that point. So therefore, their effect will be zero. So there will be no moment um, about those points if we choose that point C there to be our rotation point. And that will just leave us with one unknown in this equation, which will be HG. So now let's just set out that equation and solve for member HG. So now for member HG, we're going to rotate about that point C. So we're going to say that the sum of the moment about that point C should be equal to zero. And let's just look at the effect that our forces will be having on, on this system now. So if we start off with that 7.5 Newtons, that's at RA, we can interpret that to be 7.5 so that, let me draw this path so you can see. So that's 7.5 and this length here would be six meters. This length here would be six meters. So then that would be 7.5 multiplied by 12. So that's the first force member there. And if we look very, very closely now, we will see where that next force, that eight Newtons, it's trying to do something. It's trying to rotate in the opposite direction of that 7.5. So we're going to have to subtract that because it's trying to counter that rotation. So then we'd end up with just minus eight times the distance is now six meters across there. So eight times six. And then the next force we have, so that's the 7.5, that's the eight Newtons. So then the next force that we have will be our HG. So if we look at our HG member, I'll just highlight in blue. So that's where our HG tend to be going and its pivot point is right there. So that's going up to that pivot point at C. And we know that our vertical lens it's eight meters. So that will leave us with then HG times eight. And in this instance, our HG, it's trying to pivot this system in a counterclockwise manner. So we'll have to minus again our HG and times that by eight. 
and that's what equals zero because that's all our force is put together. So what we end up with here, 7.5 times 12, so we get that to be 90 and minus our 48 there, minus our 8hg equals zero. And what we end up with now is hg is equal to negative 45 divided by that negative 8. So we end up with hg as negative 5.625 newtons. And that's it. We have found all three internal force forces there for those members. And if you're not sure how to do the method of joint, then please watch this next video here.